I came to the Dream Center with no real expectations. If I didn't know what to expect when I came here, I had no expectations, and I came in here with an open mind and an open heart. And... Oh. Oh. God's shown me a couple things while I've been here this week. One is community. Um, it's amazing what God's community can do when we work together. Um, and community is everywhere in the Dream Center. And um, I think that even though we can't necessarily move the Dream Center to Vancouver, we can, we've taken away a lot of what the Dream Center does and we can apply it in our own community and work as a community um, to make our communities better. You guys see the metal that's inside of this concrete, the metal fills this concrete. So in our life, we have to fill ourselves with something to make us stronger, to make sure that we can't be broken. The things that we're supposed to fill our lives with is God. We're supposed to build our life on Jesus, just like this concrete. The way that we do that is that we read His Word, we pray to Him. The things that fill us are the things that are going to, re are going to reflect our actions. So it's, it's the people that we hang around with, the stuff that we say to those people, how we treat the other people around us. We see his glory. The stars become his truth, his beauty. We have everyone read this together in unison. Holy! Holy! No. Help me, Lord. Life on Jesus. One more time. Build your life on Jesus. Look how good you guys are. Super smart. You know what? I think because you guys did so well, we should play some game. Go, go, grab the other. Ah. What's his name? Just, I've been shown so many different things, and I think the best part for me has been meeting all the amazing people, especially the kids. Um, like today, we went down and just met a bunch of kids and took them to the playground and just played with them for a while and. It was really amazing, like the kids, they're always so happy and they always have smiles on their face despite their living situation or their family situation and they're just so loving. one morning and met a family with a two-year-old boy who was running around on Skid Row without shoes on um, and I just, um, just that just broke my heart. Um. I was so excited to see the little boy again after we were handing out food that I went up to the kid and I didn't even realize that this little two-year-old was running around Skid Row and had pee all over the floor, drugs, like it was just garbage everywhere. We don't have streets like that over there. This little boy is running around the streets, no shoes on. And I was like chasing him and playing around with him, not even thinking that this kid didn't have shoes on his feet. Uh, a child was traumatized, taken from his family because his mother was stabbed by her boyfriend. Most memorable things someone says, and it was actually at the, uh, the Jonah Project. Uh, down on Skid Row, and it was awesome. The guy was right before we were getting ready. The guy's telling us what we're gonna do, and he says, uh, "You know, I had a great experience. We're out on the street, and somebody said, why are you guys cleaning up garbage?' He's like, you guys must be crazy. The only people crazy enough to pick up gar garbage are Christians. Of course, you know, you're like, okay, that's a little strange. What was his response? He's like, man, thank you. Thank you for recognizing us. He's like, thank you that you recognize that we're Christians.
And then yeah, so like there's there's so many programs that you know and things that really like are unbelievable like Skid Row or Project Prevention, those kinds of things. Um, for me one of the coolest things was actually the thing that I didn't think would impact me at all. It was we were in the office just calling a list of people who have donated to the Dream Center and thanking them and praying for them and asking them if there's anything we can pray for. And um, for me I've always been really shy to pray with people so that pushed me to really grow and it was amazing how many people appreciated it. I had a whole family pick up on on different phones around their house and just listen in and um, they were just so grateful and it just like made their day that someone would call them randomly to pray for them. So um, it just made me remember that, you know, I do have what it takes to, um, to just show God's love. I think this trip has inspired me to do more and help more people and I know there's just, there's so many people that need help and I know I can't get to all of them but it's just been a huge inspiration and a motivator for me to just get out there and help as many people as I can and do what I can. Anything I've ever seen before. So in that, I, I'm inspired by the inspiration that these people have just by seeing us. I just feel so blessed and I feel, I just feel amazed at what I've seen here and I know that when I go back home, I'm going to do great things with God's love and so I'm thankful for this amazing, amazing opportunity and what a great team that we had. So the Dream Center is really the church that doesn't sleep and I'm proud to say that I spent a week here sharing in that. I just can't help imagining if, uh, if we, you know, as Crave, did something commit ourselves towards the same goal of make sacrifice where we need to, uh, what would happen? You know, if, if the Dream Center can change downtown Eastside LA, what can, can't imagine what Crave, what can Crave, crave change?